Edgar Hoover and his lover, Clyde Tolson, the two most powerful officials at the FBI, spent the entire day at the racetracks. And they're off. Well, Kennedy was going to retire uh, Hoover, and they made a, a, again, Lyndon Johnson wouldn't let him retire, so they needed him. He will reach retirement age this year, but President Johnson has signed a bill permitting him to stay on. It seems ironic, while our finest young men are fighting halfway across the world, other young men and women, safe at home, openly advocate abandonment of Vietnam to communism. Perhaps they really don't know what this war is all about. Unless a greater effort is made by the government to win popular support, I don't think that uh, the war can be won out there. In the final analysis, it's their war. They're the ones who have to win it or lose it. The Vietnamese armed forces and the government as a whole is being strengthened. The enemy is being progressively weakened. Day. Time to put your khaki trousers on. We've got a job for you to do. Dean Rusk has caught the Asian flu, and we are sending you to Vietnam. With a stroke of a pen, Lyndon Baines Johnson put the names of over 50,000 Americans on this wall. And with that same stroke, it put millions of dollars in his own pocket. Except in the area north of the demilitarized zone. Pillage, looting, murder, and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. They are criminal conduct. The bombs in Vietnam exploded home. They destroyed the dream and possibility for a decent America. It is estimated that we spend $322,000 for each enemy we kill in Vietnam, while we spend in the so-called war on poverty in America only about $53 for each person classified as poor. Not one of the 58,000 Americans that died in Vietnam was a member of Johnson's family. It is my duty to the American people to report that renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action and reply. The now famous Gulf of Tonkin event in which American naval vessels were supposedly attacked was the turning point in the escalation of the Vietnam War. Using the incident as a pretext, President Johnson went to Congress and received massive increases in manpower, weaponry, and war budget needs. It was later learned that the Gulf of Tonkin speech given by President Johnson to sway public opinion in favor of the war had been written weeks before the supposed incident had taken place. Brown and Root, one of Johnson's biggest supporters, had contracts in Vietnam worth billions of dollars, one of which was a contract to dredge Cameron Bay. That contract alone was worth over hundreds of millions of dollars. Because of Johnson, there was no competitive bidding. Bell Helicopter, another financial supporter of Johnson's, was a relatively small company on the verge of bankruptcy prior to the Vietnam War. By the end of the war, the company was worth millions. Bell Helicopters supplied the majority of the helicopters in Vietnam. We lost over 8,000 helicopters, putting hundreds of millions in their pocket. We must guard against 
the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Criminal conduct. I don't know about you. I ain't gonna study war no more. And we want peace in Vietnam. There are thousands of documents, statements taken from witnesses, photographs, and other records that were collected by the government. For more than 35 years, these documents have been kept from the public. Years old today. But 35 years after the fingerprint was found on a box at the Texas Book Depository, the rifle used by Lee Harvey Oswald was found leaning on that box. Today, the museum announced it's identified the print as that of Malcolm E. Wallace. He says a group of researchers around Texas may be able to link President Lyndon Johnson to the killing. Direct evidence against Mac Wallace was revealed at a recently held press conference in Dallas, Texas, conducted by Walt Brown. Brown presented a report by a certified latent print examiner that had discovered a 15 a fingerprint found on a box at the sixth floor window of the Texas School Book Depository and a print of Mac Wallace taken from his arrest card. In 1963, the print had been labeled unknown by the FBI and is presently stored at the National Archives. There are some JFK researchers that claim the prints do not match, continuing the controversy. However, no one has yet demonstrated that the prints are not the match as stated. Oh, I would think that history is going to be put straight, but it's going to be put straight with facts for those that knew. Mm -hmm. It's just uncovering a little at a time, and whatever I would say or not say, mm -hmm. uh, people would have... Uh, not believed. A lot of people would have believed and a lot of people will not believe, but as the facts unfold, mm -hmm. well, the people are going to believe the facts. The truth will, it's going to come out of course, and it's not going to have to be Billy Solid thing, of course, because bits and pieces is all coming together. Yeah. It's all unfolding. In 1993, Billy Saul Estes agreed to tell his entire story to Clint Peoples on videotape. Madeline Brown was to be present at the meeting to tell what she knew. Two days before the meeting was scheduled,